Hello, welcome to module 9 of the course on application of spectroscopic methods in molecular structure determination. In this module, we will have a look at the nuclear overhouser effect. We have already briefly mentioned about nuclear overhouser effect during the carbon 30 spectroscopy lesson and in this module, we will look at the origin of the nuclear overhouser effect and its effects on the NMR spectra. Now the phenomenon of nuclear overhauser effect was discovered in 1953 by Albert Overhauser, hence the name Overhauser effect. He was studying metals and what he observed was that the nuclear spin population could be enhanced by the microwave irradiation of the conduction electrons in certain metals. In other words, he was doing a double irradiation experiment of irradiating the electron spins using a microwave irradiation and simultaneously observing the nuclear spin polarization. Now in the NMR experiment, we don't deal with the electron spin polarization. We talk about <coughs> spin polarization transfer from one population of the nuclear spins to another population of nuclear spin. In other words, it could be a spin po polarization between carbon-13 and proton or proton and proton. So NOE can be defined as the change in the intensity of one nuclear spin when the spin transitions of another nucleus is perturbed from equilibrium population. In other words, at room temperature, normally you have the equilibrium population when two spins are present. And this equilibrium population of one of the spins can be disturbed if the other nuclei is simultaneously irradiated with a second radio frequency. Now, Nuclear spins that are coupled through space, in other words, due to spatial proximity, give rise to nuclear overhauser effect. They need not be bonded directly. They can be, there can be a through space interaction, and this interaction is known as the dipole-dipole interaction. Through space coupling is also therefore known as the dipolar coupling. The nuclear overhauser effect, among many other things, depends on the close proximity of the nuclear spin. In other words, the enhancement that one sees is inversely proportional to the distance. If R is the distance between two non-bonded hydrogen, then the NOE is inversely proportional to R to the power 3 or proportional to R to the power minus 3. This kind of a spatial relationship allows one to elucidate three-dimensional molecular geometries and structures and hence the power of nuclear overhauser effect. Now the nuclear overhauser enhancement that one can observe for a spin i when another spin s is perturbed is given by this expression. This is the expression that is used for enhancement of nuclear overhauser effect on the spin i when s is saturated or s is perturbed by a second double irradiation using a second radio frequency ra uh, wave. Now this corresponds to I minus I zero, where I is the intensity of the signal in the presence of a NOE effect. I zero is the intensity of the signal without the NOE effect divided by I zero times 100 gives the percentage of the nuclear overhauser enhancement. Now I zero is the equilibrium intensity which is normally measured without the double irradiation and I is the intensity in the presence of NOE which is measured in the presence of a double irradiation experiment. Now let us look at the origin of the nuclear overhauser effect. Let's, let us consider a spin of proton and another spin which is carbon-13. In other words we are considering two spins namely proton and carbon-13 and they are color coded as red for proton and carbon-13 is color-coded as blue. Now, for the two spins, there are four possible orientations that are possible, or four possible energy levels are possible. Both the spins are aligning with the external magnetic field. This would be the ground state. One spin is aligning with the external magnetic field, and another spin is opposing the external magnetic field. In this particular case, the blue spin is aligning with the external magnetic field, and the red spin is opposing the external magnetic field, and it is the other way around in this particular scenario. Finally, the higher energy level contains both the spins opposing the external magnetic field, when the magnetic field applied in this particular direction. Now the blue transition corresponds to the carbon-13 spin inversion and the red transition corresponds to the proton spin inversion and these are single quantum transition. In other words, there is only one spin that is changing its uh, orientation with respect to the e external magnetic field. Therefore, they are called single quantum transitions. <coughs> uh, we have to consider four different types of scenario. 
we have to consider at the equilibrium condition what is the population of the two spins and after saturation of one of the spins let us say the proton is irradiated and saturated what happens to the population and what happens when you have an effect of this particular deactivation in other words relaxation process this is a double quantum relaxation if you look at it both the spins which are opposed to the external magnetic field get inverted to the opposite direction in terms of aligning with the external magnetic field so the delta m is actually 2 in this particular case and this is an allowed transition you can also have transition from this is a w0 transition the arrow should be actually from this direction to this direction if the proton is getting saturated and it is drawn correctly in the bottom figure for example here now let us look at the equilibrium condition this would be the equilibrium condition where you have a slight excess population in the ground state let us assume there are four n spins are available totally for the to total number of spin is equal to 4n so you distribute equally n number of spins in all the levels except in the ground level you have slight excess of population which is indicated by delta and there will be a small population uh, deficiency in the excited state which is n minus delta whereas the other two energy levels have a population of n each so you can see that the population difference between these two states is delta these two states is also delta the population difference between these two states is also delta and these two states also delta so at equilibrium if you look at the excess population of the carbon 13 which would be this difference or this difference that would correspond to the difference between the population of this state minus this particular state which would correspond to n plus delta minus n which is corresponding to delta delta is the excess population in the carbon 13 at equilibrium let us say at room temperature now the equilibrium proton population difference is between these two states or these two states you can take these two states for example the population difference would be n plus delta minus n which is equal to delta so there is a population difference of excess population of delta in the carbon 13 equilibrium at the carbon 13 population at equilibrium the proton population also there is a difference of delta now what happens when the proton is irradiated in other words this is a scenario when the proton gets irradiated we are talking about irradiation so that the population becomes nearly equal in other words saturation is what we are talking about in terms of the second radio frequency corresponding to the frequency of the proton is being applied and the proton resonance uh, the proton spins get excited to the higher excited state such that the population now is equal between the two proton levels similarly between these two levels also the population difference is essentially same now in the presence of the proton irradiation now if you look at the carbon 13 excess population this would be the difference between this level and this level which again corresponds to delta if we look at the difference between these two levels because it is saturated the population excess population of the proton will be zero because of the saturation that we talked about now let us assume that the double quantum relaxation is operational if the double quantum relaxation is operational and let's assume there is a x number of spins that are getting transferred to the ground state from the excited state in other words from this state we subtract x number of spins and bring it to the ground state so the population in the level ground state will be n plus delta by 2 plus x the population here would be n minus delta 2 delta divided by 2 minus x so that is the population now when the w2 is in operation so let us now calculate the excess population of the carbon 13 spins between these two levels if you take for example this would be n plus delta divided by 2 plus x this is the population of this particular state the population of this state is n minus delta divided by 2 so if you work out this number this would be delta plus x in other words there will be slight excess population in compared to the equilibrium population in the carbon 13 levels therefore the signal intensity will be enhanced for the carbon 13 because of the double quantum relaxation being operational now let us assume that the w0 which is also a double quantum relaxation that is operating as a result of that let us assume that x amount of the spins are transferred from the alpha beta state to the beta alpha state now the population difference if you calculate 
you remove minus x from here and add to plus x in this state because x number of spins are being transferred from this state to this state. Now the population difference if you look at n plus delta 2 minus x which would be this particular spin state minus n minus delta by 2 which is equal to delta minus x. In other words there is a depletion of population upon the w0 being operational and this would essentially decrease the signal intensity. This would correspond to nuclear overhouser enhancement. This would be nuclear overhouser in the reverse direction. In other words, a negative nuclear overhouser effect is what is being operational when W0 is operating. When you talk about carbon-13 accumulation using proton doubly radiation, it is W2 which is predominantly operative. So one always looks at the nuclear overhouser enhancement with the proton decoupling experiment of the carbon-13 spectroscopy. Now, NOE effect is particularly useful to increase the signal intensity or increase the sensitivity of the technique of low abundant as well as low gamma nuclei when they are coupled to either through scalar coupling that is J coupling or through space coupling namely the dipolar coupling to a high gamma and high band nuclei. The example that we are talking about is the carbon-13 which is a low gamma as well as low abundant nuclei and it is coupled to proton which is a high abundant and a high gamma nucleus. Under these conditions, NOE is particularly useful. Therefore, carbon-13 under a broadband decoupled condition has two advantages. First of all, because the multiplicity is lost, the signal intensity will automatically increase because all the multiplet will collapse to a singlet, but there is no carbon-hydrogen coupling under those conditions. In other words, you have decoupled the carbon-hydrogen coupling. Secondly, the NOE effect operates and it increases the signal intensity because of the reason we discussed in the earlier slides as to how the signal intensity increases because of the population difference being higher under the W radiation condition compared to the population difference under thermal equilibrium. So the NOE effect essentially increases the signal intensities of the carbons that bear the protons. This is because of the scalar coupling, the effect would be felt in here. It need not be coupled directly, through space coupling also it is possible to have the NOE enhancement. When the carbon-13 relaxation operates only through dipole-dipole mechanism, then the enhancement is given by this expression. In other words, the enhancement of the carbon intensity, signal intensity is corresponding to or equal to gamma of hydrogen divided by 2 times gamma of carbon, which works out to be 1.988 because gamma of carbon is one-fourth of gamma of the hydrogen atom. Therefore, the mass maximum theoretical limit of enhancement that one can observe in a carbon-13 spectrum under the conditions of proton, proton doubly radiation would be roughly 200 percent or so. In other words, the intensity of the signal will be three times because original intensity, let us say x, if it increases by 200 times, then the total intensity that you would observe upon the irradiation of the proton would be three times the intensity under equilibrium conditions. Now let us have a look at the diagram that explains the nuclear overhouser effect being observed in a carbon-13 spectrum. Now let us say for example this is where the carbon-13 pulse is applied. So this will be the pre-pulse duration and this will be the free induction decay and then there will be a delay before the second pulse that takes place. This is a diagram of the uh, pulse sequence in a gated decoupled spectrum. In other words, the proton decoupler is turned on. In other words, the proton spins are now getting saturated at this stage and it is turned off at this point where the carbon-13 pulse or the radio frequency corresponding carbon-13 is applied as a pulse and after the pulse is over, the free induction decay starts. At the time the pulse of the carbon-13 excitation stops, the proton decoupler is also turned off. In other words, both simultaneously the proton decoupler as well as the carbon-13 pulse are turned off at this stage and then the free induction decay is observed. Now what will happen? Initially you have saturated the proton by turning on the decoupler up to this point. So the populations are now almost equal here. So the NOE is going to set up here. Now the proton now gets decoupled, the decoupler is turned off here. Therefore the proton-carbon coupling information will be retained here. Now the difference is the spin inversion takes place instantaneously whereas the nuclear overhouser effect 
or the nuclear overhouser effect takes some time to develop in terms of the time duration that is necessary for a NOE to be observed is much higher compared to the spin inversions which are instantaneous. So during the free induction decay the NOE gets developed. So what you get is a CH coupling information along with the NOE, NOE enhancement and this is spectrum with the CH coupling information because the coupler is turned off here along with the NOE enhancement is what is seen in the gated decoupled spectrum. Now in the case of carbon-13 without the CH coupling information NOE is suppressed this is a kind of pulse sequence that one has. This is just exactly the opposite of the earlier pulse sequence. In the case of the pre-carbon-13 pulse the decoupler is turned off. The decoupler is turned on along with the carbon-13 uh, pulse here and the decoupler is on throughout the free induction time. In other words when the decoupler is on the CH coupling information will be completely lost. Here the decoupler is off for example so NOE also will not be present. So this is known as the inverse gated decoupling spectrum. In other words both the CH coupling information as well as the NOE are suppressed in this particular accumulation of the scans. This is illustrated in the traces here which are the carbon-13 spectra of this particular compound known as alpha pinene. Now if you look at the bottom trace you have the proton coupled without the NOE. In other words the proton is coupled and there is no double irradiation of the proton signal prior to the turning on the signal of the carbon-13 pulse. So there is no NOE buildup, and this is a kind of signal intensity that one observes. Under identical condition if the gated decoupled spectrum is scanned, in other words, if the decoupler is turned on here and then turned off in this sequence here, this is what happens. You can see the enhancement of the signal under identical condition in terms of the concentration of the substrate as well as the number of scans here. So you can see the enhancement of each one of the signal because of the NOE, but the coupling information is retained in every one of the carbon signal where the coupling is directly between the carbon and hydrogen. The last trace, in other words the top trace corresponds to the inverse gated decoupled spectrum that is without the NOE you are observing the signal intensities without the coupling as well as without the NOE. Because it is without coupling the signal intensities are much higher than the other two spectrum and because it is without the NOE it doesn't matter whether you have a quaternary carbon or a CH2 carbon or a CH3 carbon they all have equal intensity. In fact this is a kind of spectroscopic methods that one can use to quantify the carbon-13 spectrum otherwise ca ca quantifying the carbon-13 spectrum is not easy because of the differential uh, spin relaxation times as well as the differential NOEs of the various types of carbon in a organic compound. So the inverse gated decoupled spectrum is useful for quantification of the carbon-13 intensities whereas the gated NOE spectrum is useful to observe the NOE effect simultaneously with the coupling information and of course the broadband decoupling essentially gives you the NOE effect and the completely decoupled spectrum of the carbon-13. So these are the various modes in which the carbon-13 spectra can be accumulated. Now proton decoupling of any nuclei which has a negative gamma will result in the lowering of the intensity due to negative NOE effect. Remember the ne NOE effect here if the gamma of the observing nucleus happens to be negative then the overall the intensity is going to be negative intensity in other words there is going to be a depletion of in in intensity. For example, when there is a proton decoupling takes place, nitrogen 15 or silicon 29 are the common examples where negative NOE is observed because the gamma values for the nitrogen 15 and the silicon 29 are negative in nature. Sometimes negative NOE can actually cancel the natural signal of the sample. If the natural signal intensity and the negative NOE corresponds to the same amount then the signal will be nullified and that is what meant by saying that the NOE can cancel the neutral signal, natural signal. Now this is already mentioned the differential relaxation times and the differential NOE of the various carbon is responsible for lack of quantitative correlation in other words peak interrogation is not possible in the case of carbon-13 spectroscopy. However in the inverse gated spectrum one can do the quantification in terms of the signal intensity comparison. NOE effect increases with increasing number of protons attached because NOE will is proportional to the number of nuclear spins that are attached. This is a heteronuclear 
cross polarization is what we are talking about in terms of the NOE effect. Now the CH3 therefore will have a higher intensity compared to the CH2 which will have a higher intensity compared to CH carbons and the quaternary carbon of course will not have any kind of a NOE effect. So let us summarize what we have learnt in this particular module. NOE's definition is that it is the change of the intensity of nuclei, nucleus I when the spin states of nucleus S is perturbed. Steady state NOEs are those which are measured after the continuous saturation of spin S which leads to new steady state population of the spin I. In other words, you are co continuously irradiating the spin S and saturating the levels of spin S just like we discussed the proton spins being saturated during double irradiation that leads to another steady state population of the observable spin which is the I spin. <coughs> the maximum possible NOE is given by the expression gamma S which is the nucleus which is undergoing double irradiation or saturation two times the gamma of the I which is the observable nucleus in this particular case. Therefore a homonuclear system the maximum NOE observable is 50 percent because the gammas will be the same so one half of this what is the maximum observable NOE effect. In the heteronuclear system of course it depends on the gamma values. If it is a positive gamma of the two nucleus then the car just like in the case of carbon 13 and proton the NOE would be maximum 199 percent. It can be much higher also if the gamma is higher. Now the NOE can be negative in heteronuclear system in which at least one of them is a negative gamma has a negative gamma. For example, proton to nitrogen 15 has a negative NOE effect to a maximum of about minus 494 percent or so. Steady state NOEs are extremely useful because they depend on the relative internuclear distances only and not at the abs absolute internuclear separations. They provide information regarding the relative internuclear distances and not the absolute inter internuclear separations. This is extremely useful because the dependence on the internuclear distance makes the NOE a powerful tool to study stereochemical assignments in organic compounds of which we will see some information at a later stage. Now if you want to read about the NOE, uh, the origin of NOE, the effect of NOE on carbon-13 spectrum and the application of NOE, a good source would be High Resolution NMR Techniques in Organic Chemistry by Claridge. This is published in 1999. Thank you very much for your attention.